Hi, I'm Val Fiat with a step-by-step -step guide to ideal exercise programming for our clientele. Too many fitness professionals are basing their program designs on their own personal experiences with exercise, and that's not a professional or an appropriate application of the science. After all, an MD doesn't prescribe drugs based on his or her own conditions, but based on the patient's. So today, I'm going to list the key steps involved in delivering the best and safest results in the shortest amount of time. Let's start with the client's medical history, where we not only determine contraindicators to exercise, but we start getting clues as to how to split up our session time amongst the different elements of fitness and how exercise response can be affected, such as is the case with many prescription drugs, such as beta blockers. By analyzing a medical history, we can also make clinically appropriate decisions as to which fitness tests are going to be the best use of the time that you have at the free consultation. You certainly don't want to spend time on tests that won't tell you much about the client's risks or fitness levels. So the next phase now is the fitness testing, and this is going to determine a lot. This is essential to really put together the most ideal health and fitness program for our clients. So a lot of things come out of fitness testing. For one, we're going to determine risk stratification. Uh, for example, their flexibility scores, especially in the hamstrings, the erector spinae, might indicate a high risk for low back pain. Uh, we also would look at cardiovascular factors like body composition and uh, you might do the Carfonin method or you might do a step test or a Rockport, whatever testing you want to do. We're going to determine a lot there about their risk for cardiovascular disease and that's really critical as well. So look for these kind of factors. Look for what your fitness testing tells you about risk stratification. We're also potentially going to find symptoms of undiagnosed health issues. Uh, for example, you might find symptoms of COPD in a client, and we then need to refer that client to their physician to look into those symptoms. Might not be anything major, and it of course could be. So look for those symptoms and definitely take note of them. Uh, we also want to determine risks associated with different forms of exercise and different intensities. For example, you might determine that uh, when a client does a certain movement, they're generally pain free, but if they go into a certain zone, you might uncover something. So we're gonna look for things like that. Again, it's only the initial fitness testing. A lot of times these are just kind of the detective work and, uh, and clues that you're gonna look for once you get started, and then you can make stronger decisions after your first session or two. Uh, now we also, all of this is going to boil down to your fit principles. So we're going to look at the strengths, the, uh, the estimated capacities of your different muscles, of uh, the max VO2 for example, we're going to look for uh, aerobic capacity, uh, breathing factors, uh, heart rate, everything's going to start being figured out as a result of the fitness testing. So you can incorporate your fit principles, your frequencies, your intensities, your times, your types, all of that that's going to plug into the actual fitness training session and program. Uh, this will all help us determine our short-term and our long-term goals for your client. Sit down with that client and talk with the rest of us at PPT so that we can really determine, okay, what's going to be, what, what goals are going to be appropriate, uh, what's going to be a good mix of good preventive health and also getting their client to what's important to them. So now that we've gotten our preliminary information from our testing, it's time to figure out our high priority items and our low priority items. What are we gonna to get to first? What's gonna get the most attention? How much attention is each component going to get? Um, we need to look at, of course, our fit principles, our frequency, intensity, time, and type for everything involving the musculoskeletal system, uh, such as endurance, uh, muscle imbalances as well, uh, strength, and flexibility. We need to start making some real decisions as to where our time is going to go, what intensity is going to be like, etc. We need to do the same thing for cardiovascular conditioning, right? These two are very separate. So it's important that when we're putting together our cardiovascular fitness, our fitness programming, that we're considering how much intensity, how much time, the modality, and all the other important factors. Uh, caloric equation is going to be an important factor as well for many of our clients especially those that are needing some fat loss. Uh, with the caloric equation, you're going to want to consider how many calories are we burning per session, how many sessions are in our plan per week, and what are they going to be doing on their own. So we need to put all of that together. And of course, for many of our clients, the PPT meal plan is also a big part of that. Uh, also, time to goal. For every one of the goals that we have for a client, we're going to want to figure out about how much time it's going to take us 
to get to that goal. So for example, if a client's goal is that we're gonna lose 10 pounds of body fat, and we've put together a caloric deficit where we're going to lose two pounds per week, we should be able to say, okay, if we follow this plan accordingly, it'll take five weeks to lose this 10 pounds of body fat. 